My name's Amy Watson, I'm an Employment and Skills Advisor at Cambridge Regional College and I'm an apprentice and I'm here to talk to you about apprenticeships and why they're good for people. Um, a lot of people think that if you don't like your job or you're finishing school there's only two options, to either carry on and do some more qualifications or just change your job, but actually there is an alternative and that's to do an apprenticeship. This combines doing your job and earning money and getting a qualification at the same time. It's not easy to get a job and without any experience this can be made even more difficult. Um, you need that chance to get started and, and the apprenticeship is a really good way of doing that. This DVD has been recorded by students like me who want to tell you more about apprenticeships. We're all from different backgrounds, we all want different careers, um, but the apprenticeship is a great choice for everybody. A lot of people still don't know much about apprenticeships. Apprenticeships can be with big companies, they can be with small companies, but the point is it's a real job and you've got opportunities ahead of you while doing your apprenticeship. As an apprentice you're treated like any other employee. You still get paid holidays and you get all the other benefits that any other employee would have. There are over 200 different types of apprenticeships, not just the traditional ones like carpentry or bricklaying or hairdressing. Um, there's all sorts including teaching support assistants, um, textiles and fashion, anything. Apprenticeships are for everyone and anyone over 16 can apply. You can go in at different levels, so you can get your trade qualifications if you need them, but you can also go up to foundation degree level, so you don't need to go to university and still get your degree. The best thing about doing an apprenticeship is you get paid while you learn. This averages at about £170 a week and you can get help with the cost of books and other equipment as well. Apparently, people who do an apprenticeship earn £100,000 more over their lifetime than someone who doesn't do an apprenticeship. How long the apprenticeship lasts depends on the course you do and the level you're taking. For me it was an easy choice, I could either go to university, get into debt or I could earn money and learn at the same time. The way you complete an apprenticeship is by going to work as you would anyway and then you have an assessor who comes to visit you about once a month and what they're there to do is talk to you about the work you're doing, to guide you and help you with anything you're not sure about. They might speak to your manager and get some feedback from them as well. And if you need to do a test, they'll only put you in when they feel you're ready for that. So there's no real pressure sort of at the start. You know, they, you just do that when you're ready. Um, there's several different places you can go to find out information. You can go to your local college, you can ring them up speak to your careers advisor or you can go on the National Apprenticeship Service website and search online. The National Apprenticeship Service website is a great place to look for real opportunities for apprenticeships. You'll need to register online and you can log in and search for vacancies in the area. So if you type in where you live, it will come up with several different vacancies online which you can apply for. It's a good idea to pop into your local college. You don't need to make an appointment, you can just come in and speak to a careers advisor. Um, about all kinds of apprenticeships and which one might be best for you. Um, there's also open days as well, so you can come to one of those, they happen regularly, and speak to somebody there and ask whatever questions you like about apprenticeships. You can start any time during the year. Um, it's not traditional in that you don't always start in September, they happen all throughout the year. To apply for an apprenticeship you will need to put together a CV but you can get help with that from your college or your school. You'll need to be interviewed by the college and by the employer as well but don't worry because you will be getting training if you need it so if you need a bit of information on interviewing techniques, if you want to do a mock interview you can, we're there to help you. But it is for a real job so you do need to present yourself in a professional way and treat it like a real job. If you want to earn while you learn, get a qualification and gain experience, then the apprenticeship is the best thing to do. You don't need a degree to have a good career, uh, so get down to your local college, go on the National Apprenticeship Service website or speak to your careers advisor to find out more. My name is Ben Harden, I work at Aylesbury Vale Golf Club and I'm doing a WBD Level 2 in Sports Turf. I chose doing an apprenticeship rather than doing college because I thought it was more a practical way of learning, more hands-on approach. Yeah, I really like, I enjoy being an apprentice. I find it, I find the way of learning more hands-on, and that suits me better as a person. And I think if you do enjoy learning hands-on, it was is a better way of going through. It suits me a lot better than to sit in a classroom. I found out about the apprenticeship on the direct gov site and I applied for it. I was interviewed by Chris and then by Oakland's College and then when they were both happy, it went forwards. I entered the apprenticeship with two GCSEs, 
you do it well, I've done everything since I started in my first week. I was cut in and they throw you right in at the deep end and I think that helps you learn a lot quicker. Oakland College um, to me once a month and then I have to go out to college every now and then to do like first aid tests or spraying tests and all the tests. But apart from that he comes here and all the other work's done by me at home. He marks all the work I've done from the previous month and sets me new targets to do for the following month. Yeah, I think the biggest achievement for me would be getting a lot of the responsibility, being knowing how to do the job and being trusted in doing it and not having someone following you around. I start at the moment at half past six and finish at three o'clock, but in the winter we do from seven to half past two. Just the hands-on approach, the practical side, working outside, working with a team. Enjoy all of that. Hopefully move on to the level three and get that done and then hopefully I'll be a head green kicker within 10 years. Yeah, I'd quite like to go out, but you can go out um, with a scheme for America as well and they accommodate you for six months and train you in another, in like their way of green keeping and they feed, like, feed you and everything and you go live out there, which is quite good. My name's Renee Richardson and I'm doing an apprenticeship at Beckett's NLP MVQ Levels 3 and IT. Before I joined the apprenticeship, I had um, I had my GCSEs, which I had five Cs, three Bs and two As. I then did four AS levels, which I came away with a B, two Cs and a D. And then I went up to college, where I got a triple distinction in a BTEC National Diploma in IT. Um, I first heard about the apprenticeship when I was at Suffolk College. I was already doing a BTEC diploma in IT and conveniently we were actually talking about where we wanted to go next and um, someone had come in asking us, would you be interested in this? It's a good step between college and work and we were all really interested in it. So of course we all did the application and here I am. <laughs> yeah, the, um, the application process was quite easy. We were given an uh, attachment in an email, which we just had to type in our answers. A quick, you know, this is what I am, this is what I'd like to do, these are my hobbies. And um, sent them back off in an email after we'd signed them. And about three weeks later, I think we heard back asking us if we were interested in going on induction days. I actually prefer the MVQ apprenticeship for the sheer fact of it's not that big step where if you were to go from college to university it's a huge leap between what you would do normally to what you have to do for everything else. I mean you might have to drop certain things and do what you need to do but if you go from here as in college towards an apprenticeship it's pretty much exactly the same as it is at college. The only difference is that you're in work as well and you're getting paid for it and you're doing something that you enjoy and you get a qualification at the end of it as well. So kind of hit all the right boxes at the same time. A normal day here at Burkitt's in the IT team it consists of me getting in at half eight, making a cup of tea, getting relaxed, answering some phone calls, doing some work on the help desk. Um, communicating with the users is quite a big part of what I do on a daily basis. I've also got some project work on. Project work consists of me doing lots of you know, software installs and making sure that everything's installed on the machine before it's pushed out towards the user. My assistant comes in to my workplace once every three weeks. He comes in, we do an observation, he checks over my paperwork, makes sure that I filled everything in the way I need to gives me some pointers perhaps if I've done something wrong. He'll also collect all my witness statements together. He'll make sure that everything's ticked off and signed. I'd say my, um, my proudest achievement so far since being here would be dealing with a problem for one of the partners. He's, he'd had an ongoing problem that had been going on for months that everyone in the team had taken a look at and they couldn't figure out how to fix it and um, they'd passed it on to me. And within about two days of it being in my queue, I'd had it refixed, resolved, and it was gone. If I pass my MVQ, which I'm hoping I have, my employers have already agreed to keep me on here. 
and um, what I'll be doing is going up to Suffolk University and I'll be taking a foundation degree in networking and communications, which they're all funding for me. If I had one message I'd like to say is that I'd like people to do an OBQ. Is that if I didn't have the chance to come onto this to do the apprenticeship, I wouldn't be where I am today. I wouldn't have the opportunity of going to do my foundation degree and possibly progressing along the career ladder. So it is, it is a good step to do. Hello, my name is Andrew Subhapati. I work for the NHS and I'm doing business administration level two. I heard about the apprenticeship program through my line manager. Um, I had to fill in a few forms and um, the assessor from West Rush College came to give me a test on literacy and university. I had some qualifications when I was in college in the Philippines, which were equivalent to basic um, qualifications here. What I am taking up on business administration um, apprenticeship is um, easy because um, I can work and study at the same time. I start work from 9 to 5 in the afternoon, Monday to Friday. On a day-to-day -day basis, um, I upload, um, I update the um, daily bed state, which is um, a list of patients with their diagnosis, and I give a copy to the um, doctors, nurses, and the rest of the team. Um, then I do some filing, which is the notice of the um, patients. Being a receptionist, um, letting people in. Um, identifying who they are and who are they going to visit, um, answering, answering telephone calls. My assessor um, observes um, my daily um, work um, and she um, gives me um, a questionnaire to answer. Yes, uh, I, uh, I use an um, electronic um, portfolio to um, upload my, um, my assignments. Um, the e for quality is um, quite easy to use. Um, everything about the apprenticeship is um, done or in my workplace. Um, I enjoy my day by working with the rest of the team, the support he gave me. I'm thinking of um, taking up um, a higher level of um, administration and possibly taking a higher level of home apprenticeship. I would um, recommend business administration apprenticeship to my other colleagues because it's a good way of um, achieving a certification while working. My name's Emma. I left school with the qualifications of all my GCSEs, at the standard I needed to do the mechanics course at college. Once I left college, I was at the qualification of a level two IMI and vehicle maintenance. And now I'm doing my level three IMI and vehicle maintenance as an apprentice. At Treadfirst. Well, once I got my GCSEs out of the way, I decided that I didn't really want to do a desk job. So this job was really good because you're sort of outdoors, working the whole time, and I thought it would be a good thing to get into because Dad had always been into like fixing his motorbikes and everything. I heard about apprenticeships through a couple of friends that were doing them for different courses and they said it was the best route for them. So I thought once I'd left school I'd go to college, do a couple of years there. And they said that it was a better way for me to learn with the hands-on experience. So from then I thought I'd get into it. Started off at work part-time as well as college to see whether I'd like it. Asked them if I was allowed to do an apprenticeship, got them to talk to the bosses, make sure it was okay. Went to college, asked them if I was allowed to do it, and then from there, college set the whole thing up. It's quite good being an apprentice because it's the best of both worlds, really. You're learning, getting paid for it, and getting the knowledge from everybody else who's teaching you things that you need to know. And being an apprentice, you usually get a set wage, but being here, I'm getting more than what the average apprenticeship wage is. I prefer being an apprentice than being at college because there's 
less sitting around in classrooms with the paperwork side of things. You're learning all of that as you're doing the job, being an apprentice. You don't need to go to and from college to be assessed. Your assessor comes out to watch what you're doing, reports back to the board so everybody knows how you're coping being in the work environment. I start the day at 8 o'clock. Um, my day usually consists of some servicing, some brake work and repairs. And all of that's enjoyable because it's still the side of mechanics that I wanted to get into. Once my apprenticeship's finished, I've got two choices of either doing a level four as an apprentice or going into work full time. But I'm hoping that I'll be able to do the level four as an apprentice to get an extra qualification in case I wanted to move on from this job and get another one. Working in a male dominated environment isn't all bad because I started off with being the only girl at college, so I was sort of used to it by the time I got into work. I think other women should follow this route, because it is quite a good route to take, you're learning, and it's a good experience for you. My name is Lucy Sorkabel. I work for the NHS, and I'm doing health and social care level two at West Pass College. When I entered the apprenticeship, I already had 10 GCSEs and a BTEC in art and design. Art and design is really different from what I'm doing, but when I came out of school, I didn't really know what I wanted to do, so that's why I did the art. And then I went into home care. I really enjoyed working with people, so that's when I applied to work for the NHS. I heard about the apprenticeship when my manager came to me and explained what it involved and how to apply. It was a really easy process to apply. Somebody came in and I had to fill out a form and do some online tests for maths and English. I chose to do the apprenticeship because I have a mortgage and I needed to still be able to earn money and this was a brilliant way for me to learn, get the qualification and still pay the mortgage. <laughs> Being an apprentice is, is brilliant because I can learn on the job and I'm getting a qualification at the end of the day. Being an apprentice, my assessor will come in and assess me on doing my everyday tasks. Um, she'll bring in work for me that I can do at home and email it back to her. It's really easy. I'm going to college um, every now and then if I need to, need to hand in work. Um, I can, uh, I've got college facilities that I can use and I also did a few exams there which were easy anyway. I do a range of shifts, um, an early starts at half past seven, finishes at half past three, a late shift starts at one o'clock in the afternoon and finishes at nine in the evening and a, a night shift starts at half past eight in the evening and ends at eight in the morning. On a day to day basis we'll, we'll come in and we'll have handover explaining walking around the ward, talking about the patients, seeing if what their needs are, do they need help getting out of bed, if so, do they need hoist, how many people do they need to transfer them, do they need to be fed, what diet are they on, things like that. Doing the apprenticeship has been really good because I'm getting more trust from the nurses to do other, other things like uh, doing peg feeds or some dressings. I enjoy being with the patients and seeing their improvements, that's what I enjoy. After I finish my apprenticeship, I really want to do the next one, the next level up, so I can get closer to doing my nursing. Nursing is really what I want to do. Hopefully the NHS will second me so I can go to university. My name's Harry Williamson and I did the Level 3 Hairdressing Apprenticeship at Cambridge Regional College. Um, and I now own my own hair salon in, in Cambridge called Halo. So I was 16 when I heard about my uh, hairdressing apprenticeship. I just finished my GCSEs. And it was getting to that stage where we were making decisions about whether to go to sixth form or whether to uh, do an apprenticeship or go out and get a job. Um, I wanted to do my hairdressing um, apprenticeship when I was 16, um, but I felt that the kind of comments and some of the jibes I got at school from some of my friends really affected the decision that I made. Um, so I, I changed the, um, the direction that I was going to go in and I went and did a, 
an apprenticeship in printing at the Cambridge University Press and that was uh, for two years. Um, I finished that apprenticeship uh, when I was 18 and I decided that it was hairdressing that I really wanted to get back into um, after missing that opportunity when I was 16. So I then pursued my career uh, at 18, I changed direction completely again. So I went and uh, found a job at a barber shop in Cambridge where I worked for six months um, and gained some kind of a bit of a taste of experience. I wanted to kind of just gently try it out, see if I liked it, and I did. And I found a job where they were going to um, send me to college once a week doing an apprenticeship. Um, which is what I, which was great. Um, I, I could work four days a week in the salon, um, doing salon duties. Um, and then once a week I was sent to Cambridge Regional College to do my apprenticeship, which was really valuable. Um, I gained some great, um, great experience there, um, working towards my level two apprenticeship, which is the kind of the industry standard that you need to work in a hair salon. Um, so doing, doing that and full-time work, which was good because I could earn money, and gain a qualification at the same time. I was working in London and I kind of felt that I was at a certain level that my business partner and I, we both, uh, we both felt that we, we couldn't go any further. So, having spoken for a few months and we were toying with the idea, uh, my business partner Stephen um, said to me that he, you know, he really felt that we should do an open our own salon and had given it some really serious thought because it is quite, quite, quite a big step to make. Um, we decided to do it. We um, went and got some funding, got some private backing, and we opened our own salon. It, it is hard in the respects that everything is on your shoulders, um, financially and, and working as well. But I think you, you, after a while, things settle and you do find a happy medium and you get used to your different working week. So it, it is good to, I think, once you get to that certain level in, in a salon, to either stay there and enjoy it and love it, or, or just to take that leap and go to, uh, and go and do it for yourself and get your own salon. That's what I did. So after we opened in February, um, it was just my, myself and my business partner Stephen um, who, who were working in the salon. And as, as we gained like a, a, a faster momentum of clients coming into the salon, we didn't really anticipate how many clients we were going to be having coming through the door so quickly. I'm very pleased that we've had the amount of clients that we've had come through. Um, and we, we needed an apprentice. We, there was a need there and a want to have one, um, not only to kind of um, pass the knowledge on to somebody else and train somebody the way that we would like them to, to be trained, but also it's important to have an apprentice in the salon because they make the salon run like clockwork. You know, you need an apprentice there to, to answer the phone and to wash hair and to get your lunch. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> But yeah, there is a need there to have an apprentice, and so so we found um, we had our the door open to loads of people coming in with different CVs and stuff, and this young lad called Charlie walked through the door, and yeah, he's a, he's a good lad. He's he's going to do well. He's got very good potential to be a great editor. So. Yeah, I do think that I do think that you got, you do need to have a passion and a want to do hairdressing if if you are a guy. Um, any kind of stick that you get from friends or um, other peers that you know, just ignore, push the back of your mind and just focus on your career. It's a great career to have. It is hard work, but it is really good fun at the same time. Hi, I'm Caitlin and I'm doing the Electrotechnical Installation Apprenticeship. An Electrotechnical Installation Apprenticeship is basically trains you to become an electrician. Well, I, I started off by doing A-levels originally. Um, the main reason for doing them was because I didn't know what I wanted to do and nobody had really mentioned apprenticeships to me before so I was just doing what everyone else was doing really. Um, when they were coming to an end I knew I didn't want to go to university, I didn't want to be in the debt, I didn't know what I wanted to do so it would just be going for the sake of it because everyone else was going. I did um, A-levels in drama, media studies and sociology so nothing like what I'm doing now. Definitely yeah, I, do, I have a weekend job like I presume a lot of other people have and but just, I was working in an office and I knew that definitely wasn't something I wanted to pursue. Well, um, I heard about the apprenticeship by going to the College of West Anglia Open evening, really. Um, I didn't know what I wanted to do, so I thought I'd just go and have a look around and see what happened. And I saw the, the stall for it and I just thought I'd go over and have a look and went from there, really. It was really easy. They made it really easy to understand. They just gave me an application form and all I had to do was fill it in and send it back. 
I get to work and my supervisor tells me what I'm going to be doing for the day, that could be connecting sockets, putting cables in, it could be a variety of things depending on what job you're working on. Well, um, at the minute I'm um, completing a level two apprenticeship, but that does progress to a level three. Um, I do a variety of different things really. I do uh, some theory work one day a week and the rest of the work is practical on the job. Well, when I finish my apprenticeship, I want to do the 2391 inspection and testing course. That means that I will be able to test the installation when it's been completed. To be honest, I think that the best thing about being an apprentice is the first time you do something without needing to ask for help and you just get that sense of satisfaction that you've, you've learned something, you've been able to do it on your own. I just think it's important to know that it's never too late to apply for an apprenticeship. If you think it's something you want to do, you should always pursue it. Working in a male-dominated environment is really enjoyable, actually. I find it it's a lot of fun. Um, you can have a laugh during the day, but at the end of the day, they will still they will help you through things. They will talk to you about things and teach you as you're on the job, and you don't have to feel silly for asking questions because they don't judge you. I think other women should take the time to look at construction trades um, in apprenticeships because women never really... Um, get the information for it like men do and I think you have to take the time yourself to have a look at it if it's something you want to pursue. My name's Amy Watson and I am a customer service apprentice. Um, well I did quite well in GCSE so I moved on to A levels basically to give me a bit more time you know to think about what to do next um, and I did pretty well in my A levels as well um, so I got an A and two B's the first apprenticeship I did was the Level 2 in Business Administration, so you're learning sort of basic office skills and how an office runs. I moved on to the Level 3 and became a supervisor for another apprentice, so I trained her in, you know, the things that I started out learning and um, I'm now doing the Customer Service Apprenticeship because it fits in more with what I do now because I'm dealing a lot more with, with customers. I wasn't given an awful lot of information about apprenticeships, in fact probably none when I was at school. Um, I did my A-levels and they, they just presumed I wanted to go to university. Um, I wanted to get a job so I applied for a few different ones, I'd get an interview for some of them and I'd get turned down because I didn't have enough experience. Um, so I thought, you know, there must be something else I can do. I had a look on the internet, um, I think it was the Connections website when I came across apprenticeships and there was a link to Cambridge Regional College on there and an office job, which is what I wanted to do, you know, it's a good place to start. Um, got an interview there and surprisingly I got the job, I was actually quite amazed. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's, that's sort of how I started. The main reason I didn't go to university was because I didn't know what to study, you know. Um, there was no real desire to be a doctor or a teacher or anything like that. And I didn't want to get into loads of debt, I wanted my own money, um, so it was simple as that really. And I thought, working in an office, every company's got an office, you know, so I'm always going to find something there, so I gave it a go. And it turned out right. <laughs> I start work at half past eight and I finish at five. Um, and my day involves all kinds of things, um, mainly it's out and about, you know, I'm travelling all around East Anglia to all kinds of different companies. As an apprentice, um, I do the job that I do anyway. It doesn't really feel like I'm a student in a way because I'm, I'm doing my job and my assessor fits around me. So um, she might come out with me on an appointment with, with an employer. Um, she'll just be there and she'll look at the way I respond to employers and how I behave with them and how how professional I am with them and she'll give me feedback as well which is really important and really helpful because it can allow me to improve on what I'm doing. There are exams but they're not like your formal writing down, you know, two hour exams, they're multiple choice online tests. Um, it's competency based so you just have to show what you can do in the workplace and they don't put so much pressure on you because they don't expect you to be perfect first of all you're there to make mistakes and that's how everyone starts so that's you know it's a good way to start a job i think um i think the thing i'm most pleased about is the fact that i've moved on from being an administrator to being an advisor you know it's quite a big jump and i'm really lucky that they gave me that opportunity so i've actually achieved a lot more than i thought i would when I started the apprenticeship. 
Uh, when I finish my apprenticeship, there are several options for me and I'm not sure which way to go at the moment. I could be an assessor if I wanted to, so I could train people in business admin. Um, so it'd be like going all the way around, you know. Um, I could be a team leader, I could, you know, manage the team I've got. Um, you know, there's several different things I can do, not sure yet which. <laughs> I'd like to say to everybody that apprenticeships are a really good way to start your career and you don't have to go to university or do your A-levels. It's not just for people who don't do very well at school, it's for everybody. Um, it's a genuine alternative and I think people need to have a bit more of a up-to-date understanding of what an apprenticeship is. I think people still think it's only for carpenters, or but it's a lot more than that. And it worked for me, so it can work for you as well.